Welcome to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss whether you should wear low, medium, or high-waisted pants, and what looks best for your body type. Just like with the lapel width on your jacket, the rise of the trouser is something that goes in and out, or better, up and down over the decades. So what exactly do I mean when I talk about a low, medium, or high-waisted pants, and what exactly is the rise of trousers? Especially if you're new to the finer points of men's garment, the rise of a trouser will likely not be your first consideration. The trouser rise is measured from waistband to waistband through your crotch area. Some people also define your rise as the measurement from the top of your front waistband down to your crotch area. The problem with that is it's not so easily measured. There's also an old formula out there that says take the waist size in inches, divide it by 26 and multiply it by nine and you get the perfect harmonious length of your rise. So that way you can make sure that your waist size is always in harmony with your rise. Low rise pants typically rest on or just above the hip bone the medium rise pants usually go anywhere between the hip bones and the belly button, and a high rise pair of pants or a high waisted pair of pants that are used interchangeably reaches exactly at your natural waistline, which is typically at the belly button. So why does it matter what the length of my rise is, you might wonder? Well, basically, the amount of fabric in the area between your crotch and your waistband has a huge impact on how the length of your legs versus your torso is perceived. A shorter rise makes it look like you have a longer torso and shorter legs. On the flip side, a high rise pair of pants makes it look like you have very long legs and a slightly shorter body. Unfortunately, the rise of most off the rack pants is heavily dictated by current fashions. At the moment, we're experiencing a low-rise pant fashion, whereas in the 20s and 30s, all pants were generally high-waisted. Sometimes extremely high-waisted pants are associated with granddads or young nerds. Just think about Steve Urkel from the Family Matters show. However, if you look at the golden age of menswear in the 30s, especially the fashion illustrations, you will see that all men wore high-waisted pants with full-cut trousers. Check out the fashion illustrations on our website or get the book Gentlemen of the Golden Age here. The second reason your rise matters is when you wear a suit or a jacket with your pants. Ideally, you never want the shirt to poke out underneath the buttoning point. Now, currently, jackets are often cut with very open front quarters, which in combination with a low rise will expose your shirt and it just looks awkward because it's a contrasting point at the bottom and it makes people want to look at your crotch rather than at your face. Also, if your shirt is not visible and you wear a longer tie, your tie pokes out from underneath your jacket and with a triangular shape pointing down, it accentuates your crotch even more, which of course is bad. On the other hand, if you have a high-waisted pair of pants, you will not see the shirt, and if the tie is too long, you can still tuck it into your waistband. Denim jeans today for men are typically cut with a low rise, even though the original Levi's had a very high rise. If you've followed us at the Gentleman's Gazette, you know we're big believers in a classic men's style, which often means that you avoid the extremes. In this case, you could argue that avoiding low rise as well as high rise pants will always keep you in a solid middle ground. However, that being said, with a rise, it really depends on your body, the length of your torso and your legs, and you should choose accordingly. Let's take a look at me, for example. I'm six foot tall or 183 centimeters. However, my inseam is just 31 inches long or just about 79 centimeters. Now, relatively, my legs are quite short compared to my long torso. So personally, I hugely benefit from high-waisted pants because they give the illusion of a longer leg line and a shorter torso, which makes me look more proportional. Now let's assume with my same height, I would have an inseam of 35 inches or 89 centimeters. Now it makes more sense to go with a low-rise pair of pants so everything looks proportional. Now one might assume that 
shorter gentlemen should always opt for low-rise pants, but that is not the case. Basically, when you wear a jacket and you look at it from a profile, the distance from the back of your collar to the end of your jacket should match the distance from the bottom of your jacket to the hem of your pants. Once you get that proportion right, you look at it in a mirror from the front, ideally without the jacket, and you see where ideally you want that waistline to be hit. Again, the gold standard is to be anywhere between your hips and your belly button. You just have to figure out if your legs are proportionally long or short. Of course, if you wear a double-breasted jacket at all times and you don't take it off, it doesn't matter that much because it's never visible. On the other hand, if you wear a single-breasted jacket, especially ones with a modern cut where the quarters are quite open, it matters because otherwise the shirt or the tie will poke through from underneath the buttoning point. Now in general, high-waisted pants are often found in combination with fuller cut pleated pants, but it doesn't have to be that way. Unfortunately, off the rack, it's very hard to find high-waisted unpleated pants and it's something you'll have to make custom. Often high-waisted pants are also worn in combination with suspenders, which allow you to have a slightly looser fit because they hang from your shoulder and therefore will stay at the same proper height all day long. If you want to learn more about whether a pleated pair of pants looks favorable on you, please check out this video here. If you're a little stronger in the waist area, a high-waisted pair of pants will help to cover up that extra body mass and nicely drape into your thighs. Meanwhile, low-rise pants would give you an overhang in the waist area, also known as a muffin top. Of course, if you have a bigger belly, you have to take that into consideration and maybe let things out in the waist if you opt for high-rise pants. Also keep in mind that the male body usually changes as it ages and so having higher rise trousers as an older person can be more in line with dressing age appropriately. To learn more about how to dress your age, how to dress older or younger, please check out the videos on our website here. If you have the chance and you can wear the pants and you see creasing in your crotch area, chances are you need more fabric and a longer rise versus if there is an excess fabric in that area, you can opt for a slightly lower rise. Another aspect to consider is the length of your ties. If you wear a higher rise pair of pants, you typically use shorter ties. Because of that, if you look at the ties from the 1930s, they were all much shorter than current regular length ties. Now, ideally, the front plate and the back part of your tie hit the tip exactly on the top of your waistband. Now, personally, I have lots of different pants with lots of different rises, and because of that, I have ties in different lengths. That way, I can always adjust the length of my tie to the rise of my pants. Once you start wearing high-waisted pants, you'll realize most of your ties are going to be too long. Because of that, at Fort Belvedere, we offer our ties in short, medium, and long sizes, and maybe you have some pants with a medium or lower rise, as well as high-waisted pants, so you can get regular length and short length, and it will always look proportional. Now, if you have a bunch of ties and you like them and you want to wear them, there are certain workarounds. One is you can tie your tie so the back plate is much longer, and then just tuck the back plate into your waistband. The problem with that is when you move around, sometimes you can see the straight back plate, but the front plate will adjust. Also, your tie knot is getting bigger. And because of that, people sometimes have their front plate and the back plate of their tie extend their waistband by quite a bit. Again, the problem with that is that it really accentuates your crotch area, which is not where you want people to look at. To learn more about tie lengths, please check out this video here. In general, if you want to look contemporary, a tight-fitted pair of pants without pleats, a low rise, and a very snugly fitting blazer that is rather short is the look you want to go for. However, if you look for a timeless style, maybe even something that is inspired by the golden age of menswear, then you should opt for a medium to high rise. Ideally, if you opt for high-waisted pants, wear a jacket with it that is buttoned. Otherwise, if you wear it unbuttoned, it can make your torso look really short depending on the exact length of the rise. For a more fundamental understanding of how pants should fit, please check out this guide here.
So what are good techniques or places to find trousers with the right rise for you? You might have guessed it, personally I'm a big fan of high rise pants simply because they work for my body and they have a certain vintage feel. Unfortunately, this style of pants is not available off the rack for major retailers today. If you truly want high rise pants, you likely will find them vintage, custom made or from small specialty retailers. If you want to try a mid-rise first, you could try classic brands such as Ralph Lauren maybe, which often have a mid-rise pair of pants. They also often mention the rise on the detail section on their website. If you can't afford bespoke and you're not sure about vintage, you could also try this trick that Ethan Wong from Street Spreadsa is using. We interviewed him in this video here and he's a shorter gentleman who likes to wear high-rise pants. His trick is to buy pants that are two sizes larger than he is, then he has the legs tapered, taken the top of the waist in, but it gives him a higher rise because larger sizes naturally will always have longer rises. Obviously, this requires a alterations tailor, but pretty much any tailor should be able to handle this conversion. And that way you can buy something inexpensively off the rack and get the fit and the high rise you want. So in conclusion, although many men don't really give the trouser rise any consideration, men who are into clothes really know that it affects how you look, how you feel and how the pants fit. Even though the current trend goes towards low-rise trousers, most men will benefit from a medium-rise or even a high-rise pair of pants. So what sort of rise do you prefer? Please share with us in the comments. In today's video, I'm wearing a combination consisting of, of course, high-rise navy pants. They're part of a suit and I'm combining it with a gray suit jacket. And so there's quite a bit of contrast between my navy pants and my light gray jacket. My shirt is kind of gray and yellow striped. My knit tie from Fort Belvedere, which you can find in our shop here, picks up the tones of yellow and gray, and it has this cool changeant effect that changes with the angle I'm standing in. The whole look is complemented by a pale yellow pocket square that picks up the yellow of the stripe as well as a tie. My shoes are black leather whole cut Oxfords. That way it's dark at the bottom. There's a little bit of contrast at the top and some pop of yellow in a somewhat muted theme that is quite unusual. Obviously, the tie I chose is a little shorter and it works perfectly with my high-waisted pants. For my cufflinks, I opted for a silver pair of monkey knot cufflinks, which you can find in our shop here. To break up the dark monotony between my black shoes and my navy pants, I opted for a light gray pair of socks with a shadow stripe from Fort Belvedere and they work well with a jacket. And even though they provide a contrast, they're not out of place because the same colors are incorporated in my jacket. <laughs> Thank you.